Hello, kia ora, I'm Philip Duncan. It's Wednesday the 29th of October. Thank you so much for joining me. High pressure, believe it or not, it is on the way. But between now and the weekend when it arrives, we've still got some frosty weather and some windy weather to deal with just yet. Let's have a look at the satellite imagery today showing the isobars so you can kind of get an idea as to where our weather is coming from, or at least the airflow. It is coming from south of Australia, so that's why temperatures are down. The cold front cleared the North Island yesterday um, with a number of degrees shaved off the temperature during the afternoon as that came on through. And so Northern is getting a taste of what the Southerners have been having as that colder change comes through. A couple of thunderstorms on the West Coast. Elsewhere, a couple of isolated showers around, but really uh, we are seeing a drier weather pattern kicking in at the moment as a result of the nearby high pressure system. It's not quite over us yet, won't be until the weekend, but you can see this line of high pressure out to our west and that's encouraging the west to southwesterly wind that we've got going into this evening. Uh, winds may turn a little more westerly rather than southwesterly in some parts of the South Island. That's going to lift the temperature up by a degree or so. Nothing too big in there though uh, and obviously with the westerly lean it means more cloud and the chance of showers over on the western side of the nation. So here is the frost map going into Thursday morning. It's not as big as the last couple of mornings, but we still see frosty or below zero weather in the purple shading. So retreating away from the coastlines in many of the more populated areas. And a lot of that is into sort of alpine, hilly um, and higher elevation areas, similar with the North Island as well. That is Thursday morning. But as we go during the day, uh, those westerly winds at the southern part of the country, they ramp up a bit because there's low pressure south of us and this high pressure uh, zone in the Tasman Sea. So the squash zone is right over the lower part of the South Island. Not too serious, but the winds will get up to gale force in some areas. And with the polar boundary around, uh, that means temperatures are down and we've got west coast rain or showers. But in the North Island, mostly dry, there might be a shower at the top of the country due to a weak area of low pressure that is sort of coming out of the Queensland area. So we might see a couple of showers, but not really looking at much. And eastern areas look dry, with the westerly winds blowing through. They'll still be a bit brisk around central New Zealand and around the Southern Alps, but the windiest weather will be at the south of the country. Like I said yesterday, this is right at the lower end of the severe scale. So where you're seeing sort of these areas of pink purple shading, especially through Fovo Strait and Stewart Island, wind gusts of up to or over 100 kilometers an hour, and the red shading shows up to about gale force. So it's sort of between gale force and the purple severe gale, that's when we tend to get power cuts and power outages. So this is right at the lowest end of the scale, probably not too much of a problem. And remember, this is a gust map. It's not sustained at those uh, speeds. That's just what it will be gusting up to Thursday afternoon. Now, as we go to the frost maps, Friday, those frosts really do retreat. But on Saturday, with high pressure now coming in over the top of us, locks in some of that cold. So we may see more frosty weather around the South Island. Not very much though for the North Island, but the temperatures will be down on Saturday morning. So before that arrives, the reason why Friday is not as frosty because it's windier over the country. A southwesterly wind blowing through uh, the polar boundary still over much of the South Island. So definitely colder weather. And that little pulse of colder southerlies coming in on Friday, then high pressure coming in over the top of that at nighttime, that cold air sinks into the valleys. So that's why we're seeing the frost expand overnight Friday going into Saturday morning. In fact, let's jump to Saturday. There it is. High pressure, both sides of the country, left and right. Uh, and so the winds are light. There might be a bit of cloud between these two sort of uh, air pressure centers and the mountains and ranges can do that as well. So it may not be perfectly sunny everywhere, but it's certainly looking mostly dry. Even the shower risk in Hawke's Bay has just about completely disappeared uh, at the lunchtime snapshot here at lunchtime. So, there, at, uh, sorry, the 1 p.m. So there may be a couple of showers just here and there, but really, the high is in charge, cool morning, mild afternoon, a very pleasant day around the country. By Sunday, with the center of this system moving further out to the east, now you're starting to notice the subtropical airflow coming down, and the first regions to feel it, the deep south, uh, Southland and Fiordland, most likely to be noticing that temperature change coming through on Sunday. It may, it's not a major difference, but it's just enough to kind of move away from the colder weather that we've been seeing. And you can see out on the Tasman Sea, the northerly airflow that is building. So on Monday, the high drifts further out to the east. The airflow north of New Zealand is now coming in and blowing around us. This is why New Zealand has such big temperature swings all the time. We're halfway between the equator and Antarctica, and the placement of high pressure makes all the difference. When it's out to the uh, west of us, dredges up southerlies. When it's east of us, 
drags down those warmer, more subtropical winds and add a nor'wester into there as well. Should be a pretty mild day on Monday right across the country, but especially eastern areas. And by Tuesday, uh, high pressure still in charge of New Zealand and the airflow still coming from north of us as it moves in and across the country, mostly dry weather, maybe a couple of showers for Fiordland and Stewart Island, but it really looks dry, high pressure north of us and south of Australia. Although they've got a very large low here, Melbourne Cup is looking a little interesting, could be some heavy showers or at least colder air coming in there, maybe even a thunderstorm or a hail shower. They get that every now and then at the Melbourne Cup, it tends to be a pretty unsettled time of the year, not just for New Zealand, but also southern parts of Australia. Looks like it's got a couple of wheels zipping off towards us. Uh, seven day rainfall, so the pink, the purple at the very bottom of the scale jumps out the most. Very little rain for the North Island and for the eastern and northern parts of the South Island and the heaviest rain down around Fiordland. You're only talking about 50 or 60 millimetres there. So that's a pretty dry map. Uh, most of you, other than maybe the eastern North Island, will be pretty happy to be seeing that. Let's just jump overseas quickly now. Hurricane Melissa, when we recorded this, was category, uh, category 4, but it made landfall uh, early this morning New Zealand time, around about just before sunrise, as a Category 5 storm. The first time that Jamaica has ever been hit by a Category 5 uh, tropical storm. Look at what the air pressure got down to, 892 hectopascals. That made it the third lowest Atlantic air pressure ever recorded. And those sustained winds when it came in, 297 kilometers an hour. You know, the other day in New Zealand when we had that storm, we had a gust to 224. That was a gust. This is sustained at basically 300 kilometers an hour. It's like a gigantic tornado. Um, just, you know, it's going to cause significant destruction through this area. And it's now moving towards Cuba. Now look at this, this is from the Hurricane Hunters, and you'll see it in a second. There we go, breaking through the eye wall and flying into it. Now the Hurricane Hunters do this all the time, but this storm was so exceptionally strong that at least two of the Hurricane Hunter planes had to return back to the uh, airbase because they had either suspected damage or just looking for it because the turbulence was just so extreme they couldn't fly through it. But here is one amazing shot that was taken, just absolutely incredible looking eye wall from one of the most powerful storms uh, ever recorded. It really is in the top uh, storms now globally, or at least certainly for the Atlantic. So Hurricane Melissa, the tracking, M means it's a major hurricane, so still a significant storm for Cuba, and then the Bahamas, and then it goes out to sea, Bermuda might still be affected, and then the leftovers will end up somewhere around uh, Ireland and the United Kingdom. Here is the gust map for this afternoon, four o'clock New Zealand time, 11 o'clock uh, in the evening for Cuba. These white shaded areas, those are the winds over 200 kilometers an hour. We saw that briefly last week around parts of the South Island from the winds going over the mountains and the ranges, but this is just coming straight off the sea. And if you've always wondered where Guantanamo Bay is, there it is on the map. So that's a serious storm system coming in now for Cuba. It's still over the top of uh, Jamaica at the time we recorded this. It is going to weaken a bit over the next couple of days, so there is some good news, but this is certainly a deadly and historic storm for the Atlantic. That's all from me. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back again tomorrow, Thursday, with your next New Zealand update.